Omnichannel and in-store optimization with analytics. Yes, the truth is out there, but it's not easy to find. Retail is massively disrupted, and it's pretty obvious what needs to change. I love this quote from Lee Peterson. These days, customers don't have to go to stores. They have to want to go to stores. That's new, and it changes almost everything. It particularly changes what retailers need to measure and understand in order to succeed. Delivering experiences is about a lot more than what a customer buys. And it's hard to do, hard to get right, hard to blend with product sales. And in one sense, that's nothing new. Because when it comes to any business, change is hard. Hard to get right and hard to do well. For today's retailers, delivering that experience starts with finding ways to do omnichannel right. Chances are you're not going out Amazon, Amazon. You won't have more products, less ordering friction, or more volume. So you have to win by delivering something they can't yet, a real experience. If there's one thing I've learned in the last two decades optimizing digital, it's that you never get an experience right the first time especially a complex one. So continuous improvement is critical to ending up delivering the experiences your customers want. And of course, measurement is the essential ingredient to continuous improvement. I got a screenshot of Amazon in 1995 and found a picture of a retail store from the same time. Then I took a screenshot of Amazon late last year and went to my local mall and snapped a picture. Amazon's changed a lot every step of the way driven by measurement and analytics. Store experiences, not so much. So omnichannel is critical because it's the path to using your brick and mortar stores to competitive advantage. But what does it involve? At the top level, we all kind of know what we mean. One customer, every channel, great experience, simple. But of course, it's not simple at all. To do omnichannel well, you need to be able to measure and optimize digital experiences, measure and optimize in-store experiences, and find ways to bridge those two experiences together to optimize journeys. Right now, most folks do a pretty good job of this when it comes to digital. Even traditional brick and mortar retailers have developed very respectable measurement, analytics, testing, and optimization programs in e-commerce. But the in-store experience? It may be more mature in some respects, but when it comes to analytics and continuous improvement, it's a mess. And of course, that makes it no surprise that the integration of those two pieces isn't very good either. So let's talk about how to do those two pieces better. Starting with the store. We know how many customers go in. We know what products go out. But what happens in between? That's a mystery, and it's a mystery you have to solve if stores are going to actually deliver better experiences. 10 years ago, hey, knowing what got sold was good enough. Today, it just isn't. No e-commerce company could survive if all it measured was total visits and product sales. But that's exactly what we try to do with stores. Of course, until pretty recently, we didn't have a lot of choice. But in the last few years, technologies have emerged that allow you to track the in-store customer journey. Passive Wi-Fi tracking, Bluetooth sensors and sniffer devices, and of course, cameras, all provide detailed, usable, and widely accepted means of opening up the black box that is the store. With in-store customer measurement technologies correctly deployed, and that is non-trivial, you can capture data that will let you answer a whole new set of questions about the store experience. Some of it's incredibly basic. Where did people go? How are stores and promotions different across regions? Some of it's quite revolutionary. Building real in-store funnels is incredibly useful. Knowing how well your associates are performing, how often they interact with customers, how and when those interactions are successful. In-store customer journey measurement is the most powerful tool there is for optimizing the human side of the customer experience. 
between store operations, store marketing, merchandising and staff optimization, customer journey measurement can drive improvement in almost every area of the store. If you're on the analytics side, and especially the digital analytics side, you're probably wondering what this data really looks like. Here's how I explain it. I've taken the planogram for a bookstore. We can imagine a customer journey looking kind of like this. Of course, it's not enough just to know the path. We really need to know where somebody spent their time. Let's highlight the linger points. Now, if I contextualize this in terms of the store, I see something like this, and I start to get a real picture of a customer journey. In fact, once this data is store contextualized, it translates into something that looks almost exactly like digital analytics data. That's how digital mortar system works. We contextualize every single observation in terms of a merchandising location in the store. When you do that, it opens up a whole world of analytic opportunities, beginning, of course, with path analysis. Now, in digital, we found that paths varied so much that it's sometimes challenging to use them analytically. So we created functional analysis, classifies pages by function, router pages, consideration pages, closer pages, et cetera, et cetera. Well, the same stuff exists in the store. You can analyze draws, corridors, and impulse areas, and you can do it by shopper segment, something nobody's ever been able to do before. I've already mentioned funnel analysis. That's how we sold digital analytics for the first 10 years. The ability to do a real in-store funnel from in the door to section interest to genuine product consideration and staff interaction to final checkout, that's really impactful. In digital, we're always analyzing what content drives actual conversion lift. You can do the same thing for the store, but I've switched it out here and made this staff optimization. And why not? At DM, we bring a range of advanced metrics, mostly stolen from sports, to the analysis of individual and team performance making sure we understand who's driving real lift in your stores. Finally, in digital, we're always using what you've looked at to understand what to offer you next. Groceries pioneered market basket analysis way back when, and it works pretty darn well in a world where you get close to 100% conversion and 20 items per basket. That's not true for most retail. For those other guys, view-based market basket analysis is a much better alternative. Of course, we live in a big data world. While customer movement data is at the core of this analysis, to really get the full benefit of it, you need to integrate other key data sources. Point of sale, of course. It's the success metric all that behavior is driving toward. Details about staffing provide rich opportunities to improve your teams, your hiring, and your training. As we've already seen, Store layout data is the key to contextualizing location data effectively. I don't even consider it optional. Weather plays a huge role in retail, much larger than in digital, and it's a key forecasting variable to boot. Weather doesn't just change the number of people in your store, it changes how they browse and what they buy. And of course, your events and promotions are key optimization points, and we hope have a significant impact on the in-store customer journey. As usual these days, the more data you bring to the table, the better you'll dine. Okay, that's the in-store measurement experience. But what about that omnichannel join? I'll start with one simple observation. There isn't a magic bullet to create the perfect omnichannel data strategy. You have mostly anonymous data in the digital realm. And your in-store journey data? Mostly anonymous. You do the math. You have to build an omnichannel join strategy by finding ways to do the customer join whenever you can. For most companies, that starts with Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi opt-in, especially with email collection, is a great opportunity to get a key that will let you match digital experience to in-store customer journey at the customer level. Mobile applications are even better. By dropping a bit of code into your mobile app, you can seamlessly meld in-store journeys with mobile application data and potentially the whole rest of the digital journey. Everyone out there is feverishly building mobile apps. Well, that makes good sense, but don't neglect their ability to tie together the full omnichannel experience. For God's sakes, don't leave all that data in the digital realm. 
Lastly, don't neglect POS integration. You can easily integrate point of sale sessions into your customer journey data. And if you run loyalty programs, you have the natural tie to the entire customer record that you can wrap around the journey analytics. Yeah, none of these strategies is anything like perfect. You won't get a 100% tie, but every single one is worth doing. And speaking of worth doing, we data folks sometimes choose to do nothing with data until we have everything. That's a mistake. You can do real omnichannel analytics even before you have anything like a comprehensive customer join key. Using just in-store journey measurement, you can isolate customers doing product returns and optimize the store experience for your customers and for you. Reverse supply chain is a huge issue. It's hard, it's expensive, it's inconvenient, but it isn't going away. With this kind of analytics, not only can you optimize the store experience, you can measure the impact on store operations and make sure you're not sacrificing important sales interactions and crippling store performance. It's pretty much the same tale with store pickup. Store pickup is a core part of Omnichannel. With store analytics, you have the opportunity to really tune the experience. I love these digital mortar visualizations for this kind of analysis. By contextualizing store data and allowing for robust segmentation, we've made it easy to visualize exactly how the store is working. And of course, there's showrooming. It sure would be nice to know if showrooming builds store loyalty, if it has cross-sell and upsell benefits, when it works and why it doesn't, and how it can best be integrated into digital remarketing. That's an analysis you can do right now and drive to real marketing action. Finally, don't assume that every join has to be at the individual level. Sure, that's always better, but there's a lot of analysis to be done by combining data at fairly granular units of time. If you can't join POS data at the individual level, you can still track and map it in 10 or 15 minute time increments. That's really powerful. This DM report shows customer to staff ratio down to sub hour levels and lets you correlate that ratio to sales. Once you've identified potential problem rates, you can then use a report like this to figure out where, when, and how often you have a problem. Data in action. And remember those funnels I talked about? You don't need individual level joins to build accurate funnels of store performance for each section and area of your store. Sure, you can probably measure efficiency per square foot already, but that's a crappy measure because not every square foot in your store is remotely equal. Believe me, websites don't measure efficiency per pixel. They measure real opportunity. And that's what in-store funnel analysis can do for you. I hope you're intrigued and asking yourself, how hard is this to do? Well, here's some good news. It's not that hard. Yes, you do have to physically install some hardware to get in-store journey measurement. But unlike the web, where it doesn't make much sense to tag one page, in brick and mortar, you don't have to wire up every store when you get started. Sure, someday you'll want to do that but you can get real learnings with a single store. And by covering six or seven stores, you can learn on all of your footprints and even bake in some regionalization. That makes for a very interesting proof of concept at costs that start for as little as four to five K per store and 20 K minimum. In two months, you'll have customer journey data flowing into the world's best software as a service analytics platform for in-store customer journey analytics. And we'll help you get started using the data with real analytics and our core integrations around point of sale and weather. It's really not that hard. It doesn't take very long and it isn't that expensive to give it a try. Give us a call or drop me a line.